leading. This evening we'll be presenting two different sketches. The first one is called the running sketch and the second one is called firing bullets. Please enjoy the Fridge Art Sketch Show, created and written by Asher Bryant. <laughs> running sketch. Fade in, interior, bedroom, morning. Amy, 45, and Ben, 54, writhe mechanically under the sheets, the, pas the passion in their marriage lost. The phone rings. Oh, I'll get thank it. God. They both grab for the phone. Ben answers it. Hello? Hey, is your refrigerator running? Is our refrigerator running? Oh, because I'm the wife, I automatically know everything that happens in the kitchen? Oh, just go check, will ya? Jeez. Amy pulls on her robe and exits in a huff. Greg. It's six in the morning. Is this some kind of a prank or something? It's something, all right. I'm here on 4th and Clybourne watching the city marathon, and I swear I just saw your refrigerator run past. Amy rushes in, stunned. Ben, you won't believe this, but the refrigerator is gone. Gone? How is that even possible? Oh, because I'm the wife, I automatically know the functions of everything in the kitchen. You never treated my, me like this when I was your girlfriend. Are you sure it's our refrigerator? Exterior, 4th and Clybourne, marathon route, continuous. Greg, 42, stands at the marathon barricade. Numbered runners sprint past. Leading them is a brand new Samsung French door refrigerator. As competitors get closer, the refrigerator slicks the road behind it with its ice dispenser. Runners slide and fall in the scattered ice. It looks exactly the same. Samsung, stainless steel, energy efficient, French doors, and a built-in ice machine. You're the only person I know who'd splurge for top of the line. Mine's so old it crawls instead of runs. Almost. <gasps> there. <gasps> the refrigerator stumbles across the finish line. The crowd cheers. Greg pumps his fists in the air. What? Greg, what's going on? Is everything all right? An official towels off the sweating refrigerator as the mayor slaps a magnetized metal on the refrigerator door. Holy shit. Your fridge just won the city marathon. He's getting a medal from the mayor. The cheering crowd attempts to lift the refrigerator. They heave and groan, but it doesn't budge. They're trying to pick him up now. Oh, they can't, because he's a refrigerator. That's fair. A TV reporter approaches the fridge with a microphone. As the first refrigerator to ever win a race, do you have any advice for all the mini fridges out there watching your victory? Yes, yes I do. Just because you're 350 pounds doesn't mean you have to stay in the same place your whole life. You can be chill, but still dream big. Is there anyone you'd like to thank today? Yes. I share this medal with Amy Pascali, the woman who took me in. I love when she opens me up in the middle of the night, just to stand there with the hunger in her eyes. Or when she sticks her hand inside and rearranges my back shelves. Sometimes she's in me so long that I can't help it but start dripping. Got the cameras! We can't use any of this. Scrap it. Interior, bedroom, <laughs> continuous. Ben hangs up the phone, looks at Amy suspiciously. Amy hovers above him, wringing her hands. What's happened? Is the refrigerator okay? Okay? It just won a marathon. Huh. That's it. You're not surprised? No, I am, but... I mean, the guy's built like... Well, a fridge. It... Doesn't it bother you that our, our refrigerator just got up and left on its own? Oh, because I'm the wife, I'm responsible for when the appliances get up and leave? At least he can get up, unlike some people I know. It was cold this morning. The fridge thrives in the cold. He won a marathon in it. And it's a marathon, not a sprint. I've got to find him. Amy grabs her robe, starts for the door. Fine. Go chase after an appliance. I'm not going to take you back after he leaves you for an industrial-sized deep freeze. Oh, go fuck your blender. I told you. It wasn't what it looked like. Amy, <laughs> Amy slams the door. Exterior, downtown, continuous. Amy rushes down the street in the pouring rain, desperately looking for the refrigerator. She shouts. Refrigerator? Where are you, refrigerator? The refrigerator rounds the corner. Amy! They run to each other in the rain. Thank God, I was so worried when I saw you'd gone. I just wanted to win a medal. I wanted to prove myself to you. You have nothing to prove. Not to me, or anyone else for that matter. Refrigerator, you've been open with me our whole relationship. You've never cared about my weight or how much junk food takeout I brought home. I think it's time I finally open up to you. 
I'm in love with you, refrigerator, and there's so much to love. Amy, I love you too. Amy opens her arms, rushing to embrace him. We better not. It might be too shocking. In the downpour, Amy embraces him. I don't care. Let the world know. I love you. At her first contact, we see an electrical spark. She falls to the ground, twitching erratically, sputtering and spitting. Yeah, I meant I'd electrocute you. Cut to white. This is firing bullets. Fade in. Exterior bank day. John, 37, kicks open the glass door, followed by Ginny, 29. They're dressed from head to toe in black, wearing ski masks. John carries a pistol, and Ginny rests a shotgun on her prominent pregnant belly bump, a diaper bag on her shoulder. Everyone, get on the ground! Bank patrons scream. The cashiers duck under the counter. You heard what the man said. The patrons lay on the ground, face down. Put your hands on your head! You better listen to the man. He's dangerous, athletic, and virile. The bank goers put their hands on their heads. How about we leave the talking to me? All right, honey bunch? Sorry. Ugh, pregnancy brain. John strides to the counter. Ginny waddles over after. John points the gun at the cashier, 34, under the counter. Miss, I want you to slowly stand with your hands up. The cashier stands shakily, her hands over her head. She's on the brink of tears. The bank has a no-resistance policy. We'll give you whatever you want. Please don't hurt anyone. If no one does anything funny, this can be a peaceful exchange. Or even a memorable bonding experience for us all. John shoots her a look. That's enough, dear. Sir, what bills would you like? What do you think? Hundreds! Do you have a bag, or...? Ginny gives John the diaper bag, which he slides to the cashier, who eyes it skeptically. Don't give me that look! Do you know how expensive childcare is? Don't mind him, first time parents. And not that you can tell by looking at me, but it's twins. Yeah, so whatever. You're putting in that bag, double it. The cashier begins to hurriedly fill the bag with cash. Oh, I bet we'll remember this day at the twins' graduation as they're walking the stage. And thinking about how we robbed a bank to afford their tuition. The cashier laughs awkwardly. What are you laughing at? Just fill the damn diaper bag, dumb bitch! The cashier shoves cash into the bag, rushed. John! Agitated, John pulls Ginny to him. Jesus Christ! Don't say my name in here! Oh, I don't think anyone- Stop! Just stop thinking. Let's just get the money and go! Whatever you say, I just admire all that you're doing for our future family, John. What the fuck?! You said it again! Well, they heard it the first time! That doesn't mean you should keep repeating it! Hey, uh, maybe go easy on the pregnant girl. Yeah, John. Show some respect. <laughs> See? They know my name now. Well, I wasn't wholly sure before, but now I know. Do you think I give a shit about your opinion right now? John moves to the patron, points the gun at her. Uh, sir, the bag's full. John slings the diaper bag over his shoulder. Thank you for your service. The customer service at this bank is frankly fabulous. Ginny blows kisses at the cashier and bank patrons. Her and John make their way to the door when, boom, there's an explosion of bright blue dye covering them both. Oh, shit. John, do you know what that means? John flips the diaper bag off his shoulder to check on the contents of stacked bills within. We're having boys! What? He pulls out a splattered bill from the diaper bag. Where Benjamin Franklin would be, there's a picture of John. He stares at his image. Printed underneath are the words, Founding Daddy. They're not real. The bank patrons stand, begin clapping. John stares around. It's people he recognizes. Mom? <laughs> That's my mom! His mother waves to him. He waves hesitantly back. And Workers, even the Bolin boys? Oh, and the cashier is actually your second cousin, Dina. Oh. Hi, Dina. I'm sorry for calling you a dumb bitch. It's okay. It happens. So I'm not going to jail? No, you're going to be a father to two beautiful baby boys. So I didn't rob a bank? Of course not, silly. So, no money? Uh, can we leave? 
Do guests bring gifts to gender reveal parties? You know, a check. Well, kind of. Everyone chipped in for us to rent out the bank. The production value had to be high. Great. You know what? I'm just going to go. Slowly, the bank patrons and party hostages scuttle out of the bank lobby and onto the street. Congrats and stuff. Bye, breeders. The patrons all exit. An elderly woman approaches John. I think you'll make great parents. Boys should be around guns. Thanks, Grandma. Fade to blue.